back to the BMW Blog Podcast. This is episode 52, uh, and today it's just uh, Horatio and I, and we're going to talk to you about the BMW iX launch, uh, Horatio's i4 drive, and uh, a little bit about the 4 Series Grand Coupe, um, the new 4 So, hey man, how you doing? Hey Nico, good to see you again. It's been a couple of weeks. I tried to yeah. go back on a weekly schedule, but it's been uh, quite busy actually. Yeah, this so, is... Um, um, really crazy Love. yeah it's been quite hectic that been a lot of car launches and finally i can talk about the uh, i4 a, a little bit more last time that we spoke uh, there was an embargo on it so i couldn't really share much but so maybe i'll start with that and then see where that takes us yeah it's the big that's the big news that's what people yeah so i4 it's huge news i was in actually um, some of you if, if you haven't seen the the review there is a um, um review on our website so basically you can see it under the test drive section but also i put up um a video uh, it was uh, it's an interview that i did with the uh, with an engineer of the i4 and also a little bit of driving around malibu in california and i can talk about that quite a bit so uh before even the car launched um i was one of the very few fortunate people in the u.s to drive the car i believe only three of us actually got a chance to drive the car um, uh, outside of BMW, actually, not many people at uh, BMW have driven the car either. So this was a prototype, so not a uh, production-ready car, uh, fully camouflaged. Uh, the trunk was full of equipment still. So they were still doing some testing uh, inside the cabin as well. It was not fully finished. Uh, and there were still a bunch of other, um, you know, buttons and controls from uh, from other BMWs in there. But the idea was that, um, you know, they wanted me to drive the car and see what I think about it. and. They actually initially they didn't want to tell me um, which i4 was at the time. I had no idea there were you know I mean I kind of had an idea there were there are going to be two or three of them, but um, they didn't specifically say okay this is the i4 M50. Um, didn't take me long enough to figure that one out. Yeah, so basically my day started in Malibu and the lead car was an M2. The idea was to go up the hill there and um, kind of get a feel of what the car can do. Right. And uh, immediately, uh, the, I noticed the car, it's, it's quite special, you know, uh, there was a lot of power coming from under the hood, <laughs> so the to hood. say, and um, it, it was it was super quick. I mean, we just got on uh, Highway 1 immediately, Pacific Coast Highway, and started to floor the car, which is super, super fast. I mean, I was really, really flying on that highway. And then as we went up the hill, the idea was to really see how it handles as well, right? There is this um, idea that maybe if you have an electric car, it's not that exciting. Maybe it's all straight line performance and and that's about it. And that was kind of the um, the idea behind this drive, uh, taking up the car onto those uh, curvy roads. Quite a lot of them actually over uh, about an hour, an hour and a half drive. Uh, there were a few dozen corners if not more maybe in the, in the hundreds right. it was uh, it was quite exciting actually you know some tight some super tight corners so it took me a while to kind of build that confidence with the car but uh once i did i just started to just floor yeah. down that 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 paddle and just keeping up with that i am too uh i love the fact that you're getting that instant torque coming out of each corner i was able to break late and just you know floor the paddle and just fly out I love the, also the steering feedback was quite impressive. Actually, you could tell there was a i4 M50, so it was a little bit tuned by M. Uh, and there was plenty of grip, um, which is uh, you know quite nice, especially you have a, a dual motor setup. And uh, I think I was riding on um, trying to think, might have been Pirelli P zeros. Yeah, I think okay. there were Pirelli P zeros. So it was uh, it was quite grippy. Uh, it was a quite grippy tire also. But um, back to the driving experience, yeah, I mean, just uh, just being able to keep up with that M2, being able to to just drive the car like a normal sports car, um, just made the drive super, super exciting, honestly. Um, of course, you know, the idea was not just to drive the car in a super sporty mode, it was also to try out the different comfort modes, also play around right. with the brake regeneration, brake energy regeneration, which uh, has four different stages, so it's a little bit different than the i i3 similar to the ix3 and that's one of the things that i liked a lot about the car i mean that um that brake region if you're not used to it especially like on the i3 it could be it could throw you off a little bit if you're not used to that it can even give you some uh, some motion sickness not everybody loves it that one panel fill 
but um, in the i4 you have different modes and you can adjust that um, and I spoke in that review about that quite a bit but the idea is you know that you can either let the car do the braking by itself a little bit more or you can take over the braking and and do that there is also an adaptive mode where basically if you're riding behind another car you will actually do a little bit more uh, braking for you but then as soon as you ch uh, change the lanes you know, it just goes into the mode where you can just coast, basically. So um, that so was kind of... With that, is that to increase efficiency? Like if you're riding exactly. another car, you don't you, you will need more brake regen, but if you're not, it'll allow you to coast more? Is that what exactly. you're saying? That's exactly, that's exactly the idea. Okay. I don't remember that's the cool full... That do that on, on the fly versus mm -hmm. you having to, like, you know, play with a... I don't know how you mess with the regen and that, but, like, usually it's like you play with paddles or whatever, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, this wasn't. I nicer. mean, yeah, there's, there are no paddles really. I mean, just you just switch in the um, i i drive system, I believe, or maybe there was something on the steering wheel. I don't remember if that was on the production it's car just as how, well. Like, most cars are doing it now. They're like little paddle shifters, and if you oh, yeah, click yeah. them, gotcha. it, it cycles like up and down through the regen modes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one was a little okay. bit simpler than that, but um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the idea uh, behind the uh, brake regen. So uh, it was quite cool. I think the i4 M50 gets a lot more brake regeneration than the regular i4. There is a okay. uh, power difference in gener in uh, regen for the two of them. I don't remember the specs right now, um, but yeah. So basically, that was kind of the kind of, that was kind of the drive. Uh, I didn't play around with a lot of other things. There was an iDrive A system that I had a chance to really, um, you know, experience, but it was also pre-production. Um, so um, I think we put up a video on that as well. So yeah. like, you can check it out if you want to see it. We both got but, to um, do two on like the iX and stuff. Yeah. And they were sitting around. So yeah. we, we got to play with iDrive A quite a bit already. Yeah. So the i4, yeah. So honestly, it's, it's a fantastic car. I, I haven't... I told you earlier I didn't expect much from it, but now I came back, uh, you know, dropping off the car, and and I told everyone I said, you know, this is the car that I will probably get in the future. It's um, it's fast, uh, it's spacious actually inside. It's got a really nice shape. Now that we saw the car fully unveiled, it's got a really nice shape. Um, plenty of tech inside. Um, of course, I kind of wanted more of the design details from the concept car, like the interior. I kind of wanted to be that yeah. way. It should have been super super cool, but yeah, that, I get it why people didn't crazy. do it. Um, of course, the BMW says that you know they wanted to keep the similar feel from the four series and three series, so people can jump from electric to conventional. Yeah, maybe that's one of the reasons, but you know it's also quite expensive to um, retain yeah. all the design features and tech yeah. from a concept. I mean, that's really that's really the answer. If they were to put that yeah. insane interior in just the i4, it would have been a cost of fortune, and they would, you know, the cars are already probably incredibly expensive, mm -hmm. so it does it wouldn't have made much sense. Plus, exactly. it does actually make sense to keep it similar because you are trying to pull three series buyers over to it. You know, uh, yeah. I don't know if four series coupe buyers will go over to it. The four series grand coupe buyers might cross shop it, and three series buyers might cross shop it. So it does make sense to have it like some wildly outrageous cabin that they're gonna have to get used to. I mean, I think if you if you have the means to charge the car, so let's say you have a garage, you can install a charging station, or you have uh, easy access to um, fast charging, I, I don't see why you would want to buy the conventional car over this one. Price-wise, it's priced not bad. I think it right. uh, starts at no, 55 for the good, regular actually. one, and then the other one is 65 yeah, I mean, um, uh, if you take out the subsidies, if you buy the car in another 7500 plus some states to like 3000 so maybe another ten grand off, really yeah, not that expensive no, and you're not. getting a lot if you think about it i mean a mid like a mildly equipped 330i is 50 grand yeah. you know what i mean so 55 for an i4 that comes with more tech uh as standard and is all electric is pretty good it's not just you know? that like i like i told you i'm going to emphasize once again it's it's a riot to drive it has been a while since yeah. i been in a BMW that really uh, put that this, that big of a smile on my face. Well, wait, what's um, the M50 though? That's what sixty five to start seventy five. I'll start six uh, sixty five. The um, I mean, that's really good. The M50, yeah. Because so, what's the M3 competition? Seventy two um, to start, to I think. See. So I no, I actually, I see maybe six. Actually, I I'm think not the sure. Honestly, base M3 starts at in the mid to high Get 60s, up, and I think the M3 comp is 70 in the low 70s. I think to start, and either way, I mean the i4 M50 has more power, is all-wheel drive, fully 60, electric. Yeah. 
And, Competition uh, started at 74, 72, 8 for the so M3. The, the i4 70. M50 is cheaper, more right, powerful, yeah. all wheel drive, has mm -hmm. a more practical trunk. You know, that's yeah, a so crazy I mean, that was kind of the idea that I had in mind. I said, you know, if uh, one DI4 um, is going to be available to test drive once again for like longer time. Um, I would love to get the car and you know put it side by side with the uh, mm -hmm. M3 and M4. Yeah, we got to do that. We have to do, do a few that. laps on that. Honestly, I mean they're built for different purposes. I don't think the i4 uh, will leave yeah. much on the track. I, uh, that battery will heat up quite quickly, yeah. especially if you try to track it. Right. Well, but it would be nice to see how the straight line performance will be quite cool to kind of see which one is faster. That and also real world you know, get it on some good roads and see which one drives better because mm -hmm. the M3 competition is fantastic to drive. It really is, like, sensational to drive. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, one of those things where it's so capable that, you know, when you're on the road, is it really, do you really feel that, is it that much better than something like an i4, which is yeah. cheaper, faster in a straight line probably, and more comfortable and you know more practical mm -hmm. and stuff like that so it'd be a really interesting comparison between those two considering their price points and their power mm -hmm. is so similar yeah so that was kind of the i4 experience then um we i actually went back a couple of weeks after that uh, for the unveil of the i4 and ix and that was the first time that i saw the car fully unveiled not in, not in yeah. photos um and um once again i mean nothing that i didn't expect um what what you usually uh, see in the photos, that's kind of what the car looks like in real life. That yeah. kidney grill is still there. I mean, if you hate it or love it, it's up to you. Um, I do like the simplicity of the interior. It's it's quite nice, actually. Um, it's not, it it's it's not packaged as good as the... Um, let me turn this on. Hold on one second. Just light sometimes turn on by themselves. I don't know what I was like. Oh, design. The interior is not as packaged as well as something you were saying. Yeah, so I saw the car, you know, at that event basically, and didn't surprise me at all. I mean, it's kind of what I expected. Um, I kind of wish it had a different interior, you know, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. It's simplistic and all of that, but it's also not as well packaged as the i3, clearly, because it's built on a flexible architecture. Right. So. There are some constraints there when it comes to design, but it's still quite spacious. I was in the rear seat and I was testing the um, uh, headroom and I'm quite tall, 6'2", 6'3", there, 1.9 meter tall. And um, I, had, I had decent room in, in the back. It's um, I had got some scoop, scooped out seats a little bit, so um, you lean a little bit lower. And um, that was fine. And then played around also with the uh, iDrive once again. I wanted to see if there's a difference from the one that I tested a little bit earlier. Um, not really any difference. Uh, it's quite responsive. I want to see if the if it feels responsive when you're when you're switching in mean, between tiles and different modes, and I like that. I, I think some people will complain about the lack of physical buttons, basically, because they were so used to program them. So that's yeah. one thing that um, uh, I don't know if people will enjoy that. But apparently, BMW is trying to push also a lot of the voiceover. Um, sorry, uh, a lot of the um, voice yeah, commands, voice basically, and. Um, that's why that's why they they kind of went they kind of took those away, and it's a little bit more simplistic in approach. Yeah. But um, I, I like the car overall. There is no frunk as they call it, and so I opened the the hood and I took a look underneath. It's just a you know plastic piece of, uh, you know, and just covers uh, whatever it's on there. The heat pump and there is another pump. I don't remember which one they mentioned. So that was one of the reasons why they said that they couldn't really fit a, a frunk there because there's really no no space um they told me that they could take out the uh, the cover so we can take a look like underneath but um there's just too many people around so we decided to uh, postpone that gotcha and then i saw the ix and the ix i didn't drive it yet hopefully we'll drive it this year but um Honestly, that's one car that looks a lot better in in real life in person if you want to call yeah. it that way it um I just got it's I've seen all the photos, I've seen the concept, I've seen the production photos. It was my first time when you saw the car too and you can tell me what you thought too, but I just felt like it's got this nice presence. That grill was not obnoxious. It kind of fit the profile of the car. It was massive. 
but at the same time it looked sporty it did not look like a box right. it was yeah. it was quite sporty you know the, the design lines <clears throat> were nicely done it was not overly done and um it, it's a smart car i mean honestly we've talked about this in our articles uh, super smart car a bunch of features that you can you know talk about too but overall i think that car will sell extremely well uh, yeah. One, because there are not that many options in the BMW lineup. There is no iX3 in the US, so clearly you're getting an all-wheel drive with this one. Um, decent range and a lot of tech. And what I liked about this car compared to the i4, it's the packaging, right? So because it's it's built right. on a, a custom bespoke architecture by itself, uh, the packaging is fantastic. Inside, it's extremely spacious. It doesn't even compare to an X5, even though size-wise they're kind of the no. same maybe in yeah. between an X5 and X7, but um, extremely, extremely spacious in inside. And um, I just love the way they did with the design there. I mean, I think they absolutely nailed this. And I was looking at the reaction of other people that were there, not just journalists, but there were some other VIP guests and everybody was attracted towards the iX. I mean, they looked at the iPhone a little yeah. bit, but they just went straight for the iX. Um, it just got something. And it wasn't even my favorite color that it was white, but I, I've seen it in black in some photos and it looked, really really mean yeah. so um i think that car will sell well i don't see any I reason agree. why they wouldn't sell a lot of those in the u.s yeah no i agree 100 percent. actually in fact uh, i was talking to because i got a closed room look at it a few mm -hmm. weeks back uh bmw held an event at classic um classic car club manhattan mm -hmm. um, a few journalists were there maybe like five six there weren't, weren't a lot of them yeah. Um, and we had it was a closed room. They took our phones and everything, and we went in. And it was nice because there was like no one really there. It was only like a handful of us nice. journalists, a couple of BMW mm -hmm. people. So we could really like poke around the car. We had all the time we wanted. So like, you know, I was really I played with everything. You know, I was in in the trunk. I was in you know playing with the iDrive Eight. I really we played with everything and you know, talking about it. And you know, it's one. You're right. It looks much better in person. And I think the grill. Uh, what benefits the grill is the fact that the car is so big. Mm. You know what I mean? Like when it's you put really that wide. massive grill on the four series, which is this pretty small car, mm. especially like the frontal area is small. The frontal area of the iX is enormous. It's a huge SUV, so it just looks better. Um, it's a lot more so, balanced, I would say. Yeah. Right, right. It's more cohesive. It's just mm. it it works better. Um, I still don't like the weird like floating D pillar thing. It like tries too much tries too hard to look like the i3, I think, and it, I don't think it works that well. But overall, uh, I actually really like it. I think it's a really good-looking SUV. And I also think you're right. I mean, if it were my money, and this is what every other journalist in the room said, if it were my mm -hmm. money, there's no way i buy an X5. I mean, they're priced similarly. There's no way i get the X5. This is yeah. so much more interesting looking. The interior is fabulous. I mean, it's the best BMW interior I've ever seen. It's the mm -hmm. best BMW interior I've ever felt. Like, every material is incredible um it's so well built it's so well made yeah uh, and i think i was even i was in a pre-production model and it was still like it was fantastic it was just so good and every other journalist that was there was really impressed as well i mean it has the um what's it called the electrochromatic roof or whatever yeah, yeah that's roof. that's you, pretty cool actually yeah we were playing with that you press the button and it just you know goes completely opaque you press it, it goes mm -hmm. transparent um admittedly mercedes has had that for like yeah. probably like eight yeah. years now but yeah. i mean it's still it's really neat. cool yeah, yeah it is cool um and the lack of an actual sunroof that opens might bother people but i think that's pretty cool and you know i drive eight where is so nice it works so well uh yeah. the seats are great I, I just i was really impressed with it um yeah, I mean, even the controls, right, they're different than any other BMW that's, that's out yeah. there. So, I mean, I think the idea was that they wanted the iX to be kind of like a flagship. So you could tell that the the finishes and the material and all of that, it's it's at least a few uh, yes. a few degrees higher than what you oh, see yeah. in all the I other mean, ones. I was just in a, um, I mean, I just test drove an Alpina XB7, and the mm -hmm. iX is so much nicer on the inside. Yeah. Like, it just feels, it just feels better like the materials feel more and not just that they're better they're more interesting you yeah. know like the the leather is is nicer you have all those like cool like copper metallic touches mm -hmm. the the like exposed like the um the open pore wood trim open, is yeah. really nice mm -hmm. you know everything just all the glass controls it's just such a unique interior yeah. and i mean you know bmws don't you know it's the same sausage different lengths when it comes to the interior so 
this being so different and so unique was really fun and it makes it really special and again like you said dedicated ev platform so there's so much space on the inside Mm -hmm. uh you know i mean i'm not that tall i'm only like five nine but uh, i was sitting i set like put my driver's seat you know how i would drive it and there are people behind me you know over six foot with tons of knee room and, and tons of headroom it really is for sure uh, like if you were in the car market and you didn't care gas or electric, like you could, you could do both. It makes no yep. sense to get the X5 over the IX, which was almost, it's almost unfair. It's going to like, I feel like it, it would cannibalize X5 sales uh, because it's just so much more interesting. And I think it's a better car overall. Yeah. I mean, different demographics, probably they're going to target with that, but um, probably. Yeah. But yeah. speaking of the packaging, um, they had this. They had a tablet, an iPad, and they had um, AR software on it, um, augmented reality. And basically, mm-hmm. the idea was to kind of walk around the car and sh- and see the packaging and how the batteries are installed and all of that. And you could tell immediately, you know, by just walking around it, that there was so much space to work with. Yeah. And that's why the cabin is so spacious. So, um, I mean, honestly, that's not going to be an issue. But um, space space aside, like you said quality of finishes absolutely fantastic yeah. and this was not even the top model so this was the um, uh, ix x drive 50 so they have three of yeah, them x drive 40 awesome. 50 and m60 right. so i want to see that m60 you know in real life we've seen the photos yeah. they posted a few of them just a few but i'm kind of curious to see what's you know inside that's different and yeah. especially design wise it looks so much so much more aggressive than than those cars. And I think the X Drive 50 that I saw had some sort of a sport, M Sport package. But the uh, yeah. i5 M60, 600 something horsepower, I think that's uh, a beast. I think that'll yeah. be, that be a lot of fun. If the i4 was fun, I think that car will be, it'll be a riot. Well, yeah. And I think it might even be, not that it would be better than the i4 because it's so much bigger, but it might be more impressive for its size considering, mm. you know, dedicated, again, dedicated EV architecture. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's, center of gravity is going to be like lower because the battery is better integrated into the floor and and on all that so it's going to be i think maybe not lower because it's an suv so it still rides higher but you know what i'm saying like relative yeah like it's just going to be uh i think it might be even more impressive considering the the fact that it is bespoke ev not a four series chassis converted to to you know ev architect or ev powertrain um it also has a bunch of nifty features like the um windshield fluid um they, yeah, you can then, load then, it up yeah. by opening the the, the roundel on the, the roundel on the, on the hood so that's kind of that's kind of cool I think there is the, a self-healing yes i was gonna, just gonna mention yeah. that the self-healing skin on the um kidney grills and the kidney grills which is actually a, g- a genius idea because there it's a you know it's not a real grill so mm-hmm. the, nothing passes through it yep. Um, yep not functional so because it's a gigantic plastic panel right on the front and it houses sensors Mm -hmm. it's going to get hit with rock chips and all sorts of stuff as you drive along it's going to get scratched eventually like Mm -hmm. it's going to get beat up so they make it in a self they put a self-healing film over it so all you got to do is hit it with a heat gun or even a blow dryer and that film heals itself Mm -hmm. you know it's i mean that's not super new technology i've seen that on yeah exactly there's some expel products yeah like you can go get that wrap Mm -hmm. on your car but um, I think it's just cool that it comes on that little portion because you know it's going to get beat up over time, especially yeah. if you're like driving on the highway a lot or something. It's going to get beat up. Doesn't it have a feature also where it, it's going to melt the uh, it's going to yeah. melt the snow. Mm-hmm. It has a heating element built in, so yeah. in case snow cakes up on it, um, the sensors will still function. You can heal, yeah. uh, melt the snow off, exactly. which is uh, also pretty clever forward thinking. Then if you go to the back, the roundel also uh, pulls out from the, the camera, from the right? trunk. Isn't that for the camera? Or no, it's it it's for the camera, for the... but also for the um, you're actually going to be able to um, uh, to spray some um, some windshield fluid. Right. Yeah. So it's got a dual a dual purpose. Yeah, to clean is, the camera. Yeah. It's quite a, it's quite interesting. I mean, they're they're yeah. they're gimmicks, but um, I don't know. They're, they do serve a purpose. Things they they do stuff. You know. Yeah. Like I think the self healing wrap is a clever little touch. I mm-hmm. and I, and every. Every customer is going to brag about that. Every yeah, exactly. customer that has it's going to be, oh, my car heals itself. You know, yeah. every, especially a BMW customer, right? So everyone's <laughs> going to do that. Um, but yeah. it is cool. It, it does add yeah. function. And, and um, I think there are a lot of clever little touches like that throughout the, the whole car. 
yeah. there are too many for me to remember. Yeah, there are so many. I mean, there is one that I that I wrote about the TPMS. There is an advanced TPMS system in the IX, and it does a bunch of different things that I've not seen in the uh, in a really? BMW before. They didn't that's worth a that, read. Uh, with us. Yeah, um, it's a, it's, it's actually quite it's that. quite impressive. It's I mean, aside from all the TPMS functions, um, it's going to be able to tell you when you need to change the tires. Um, uh, it's like going the, to tell you if those designers. are the right tires for the car. I mean, there are, I mean, bunch of other features too. Um, I don't remember all of them either, but um, that was uh, that was quite cool too. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so yeah. that's the IX, right? So I mean, those are the big the big product launch is basically there yeah. uh, in Los Angeles. They did one in Munich also. Hopefully um, we get to drive the cars once again um, yeah, maybe later I'm, this I'm year, you know, see really how, how things both. evolve. It's it's weird. I didn't think I'd be so excited about a, you know, 5,000 pound SUV, yeah. but I am. I think the iX is, is going to be a great car. I think it's going to be BMW's flagship like luxury and technology yeah. car because like I said it was just in the XP7 which is a lot more money and mm -hmm. the I thought the iX was nicer on the inside and more interesting yeah. you yeah. know I think the iX is going to be a really big hit at least I mean what the hell do I know it's an interesting I, product I it yeah it's an interesting product because I, I did a um, I did a zoom call with uh, Frank Weber he's the head of uh, R&D for BMW a board member um, actually right right prior to the launch or after i don't recall but basically we talked about this you know being a bespoke architecture and i'm still trying to get an answer on why bmw decided to just build this car on that architecture only i did get a, some sort of an answer but it's got to be an expensive project to um to just use one platform for one car and then knowing that you're not going to be able to have a successor on the same platform so now you have to reinvent something else in the future maybe just like the i3 basically or the i8 yeah. But uh, until then, I'm sure they will um, they will keep this in production for quite some time. They invested quite a bit, probably in the in the car. So it being the flagship, it's got to it's got to you know stick around. Yeah, no, it probably will. I mean, they're going to try to make their money back on architecture. And I guess well, what was the answer? What what did he say? Because um, plans they I mean, just changed. The their answer plans. was this. I mean, the was it's a it's a flagship car, so they wanted to have a flagship car in put essentially the best tech that BMW has today in that car. And I think they did, other than the um, uh, self-driving uh, features, which actually I asked about too. When they announced the iX, there was this huge conversation around uh, autonomous driving and what's coming. And they were talking about level three, level four. There was this idea that the car will have the hardware for level four, but initially it's going to be just enabled for level three. Now it's not even level three anymore right now. It's more like level two plus. So it has more advanced features than the seven series, for example, but it's not the true level three that they talked about. So I think they ran, just like everybody else, they, they ran into some issues uh, uh, with autonomous driving, um, being safe and all of that. Uh, we've talked about that a little bit as well. Because if you're operating in a geofence or in a controlled environment and the car can do pretty much anything you want it to do, but it becomes unpredictable in certain situations. And I think they're not ready to commit to that. I mean, it's with the yeah. autonomous driving thing, I don't think anyone would argue the fact that a car company can physically a car drive itself in a pre-determined uh, environment. Like, I mean, Car companies have autonomous cars lap race faster than humans can. Um, you know, the the to get the car to do whatever you want by itself isn't the problem. I think a lot of car companies are slowly realizing with Teslas, so many Teslas having so many incidents, yeah. um, that there's so much more nuance to driving on the road with other drivers, and then there's regulatory issues, and there's just so much. You're seeing so many automakers completely back up. They, mm -hmm. you know, a few years ago, everyone was talking about autonomous driving, autonomous driving, yeah. and now they're all stopping that kind of talk. It's all slowing down because I think they're realizing, okay, we need to wait a few more years at least to see how technology advances, how yeah. regu uh, regulations advance, and, and things like that. Because, yeah, I, right, the IX is like level two plus, and that's their best, you know. Kind of stuff, but I, I don't see that as a problem. I really see that as BMW just being like, yeah, you know what? No one's going to be able to do 
Like they're they're not behind, even though it's yeah. level two plus. Like they're not behind because mm-hmm. even Tesla's autopilot is level two plus, despite what Elon Musk. It really is yeah. only level two plus, um, according to like the uh, say, like the EPA and all those mm-hmm. companies, all those uh, governing bodies. So that's not. I think problem. that's where um, that's where uh, Weber was hinted at too. He said that you know they're level two plus. It's really level two plus. It's not what other automakers suggest they have. So right, he actually um, hinted at that as well. But yeah. um, I didn't get into details of what it means but um i guess when when i'll drive the car when we drive the car we'll focus on that quite a bit since they're especially important in uh in this new uh, in these new bmws yeah not for sure yeah, so, really exciting. yeah so i think we won't see the cars anyway in the u.s till early next year they are launching in europe a little bit earlier but um i think first units will be uh, just uh, early next year, they I think they started taking pre-orders. I think on just the i4, maybe both of them. I don't remember. So I'm curious to see uh, eventually how many pre-orders were actually um, taken. Um, that one might show the interest that customers have. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I could see the iX being great among like you know wealthy types. Well, obviously because they can afford it because it's going to be expensive, but. It's uh, it's very different looking and unique, and then I could see the i four being very popular among like your your typical, um, kind of three series four series people mm-hmm. who are going to be like, hey, I mean, even the base one, two hundred and no, three hundred miles, right, for the base i four. Uh, no, so yeah, the base is three hundred miles. The one yeah, that yeah. I drove, it's two forty five. Two forty five, right, right. So yeah, I mean, just because of the um the additional power and all that. Right. So, I mean, I could see that being popular with people who like least, you know, your typical 330 or, you know, whatever, 430 Grand Coupe yeah. can say, hey, well, this is all electric and it has all the range exactly. I need. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. I could see it being yeah, so popular. So, that's the for an iX. So, I guess we talked about that quite a bit. What else was new in the BMW world? Oh, yeah, the 4 Series Grand Coupe. So, yes. that came out this week. Yeah. That was, a, that was a big one. And we can it just was. talk a little bit about that. I mean, there's not... N- no surprise there either. They just put no, it that it's, way. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's cool. an i4 basically, same as an i4, same same platform, same car, just different uh, front end and rear end a little bit changed and too. But it's kind of the same thing. But for some reason, you you and I talked about is it, it actually looks a lot better than the four series coupe. Yeah, I can't figure out why. I I, I racked my brain. I was looking at both pictures of like yeah. a similar angle, i4 and the four series Grand Coupe, and I was like, why? Does the four series look better to me for some odd and even reason. in the four series coupe though it looks a lot more uh, again using the word balance but i feel like the larger size on the on the grand coupe makes it look a little bit better with yeah, that grill than looks, on the yeah I agree. the two door um and, but there's a th- for some odd reason uh, like uh, maybe it's the trick of my eyes or just the color of the yeah. the, the cars I mean, the color was cool eventually in red yeah. that was a great yeah. choice for the it, color lounge it is a good it is a good color um and the i4s were like white it was you know pretty boring colors for the, yeah. the press launches but i mean um, actually they used the um they used the frozen portimao blue on the i4 did. m50 they did and you know what Which, when i actually when I went back and use that it did look much better so i think yeah. white makes it look too like front in the back mm-hmm. like it kind of looks too tall over the rear wheel yeah so it kind of looks a bit chunky but then when you mm-hmm. give it a slimmer color like like the, even the frozen uh blue looked really nice but yeah. The Four Series Grand Coupe has this. I still don't like the grill, but the rest of it, uh, I think, looks really good. I think it's a yeah, really it's a good looking. Um, you know, I think it looks better than the Three Series from in profile. I still like the Three Series grill looks yeah. better. But I think BMW always nailed the Grand Coupes. I mean, if you look at the Six Series mm-hmm. Grand Coupe, uh, oh. you know, from years back, it still That's looks really good. It's cars. actually. It's a beautiful car. And then you look at the four series previous one, Grand Coupe, same thing. It was a really nice car. And then you move up to the A series Grand Coupe, same thing. Absolutely stunning car. So they have they they seem to always nail the mm-hmm. the four door coupes, you know, even though well, that's not that. a I don't think they beat their original. The six series Grand Coupe is still Yeah, it's oh, just gorgeous that it's car. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. perfect. Yeah. I but, saw the um, six Grand Coupe the other day on the road and I was like, damn. Oh did you yeah. That still looks Fantastic so car. good. Agreed. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that was one of the launches this week. Um, it's not much info on it. I mean, basically just another four series. There yeah, wasn't anything new other than the design and uh, yeah. and a few special colors for that. 
But I think the one that I liked a lot uh, this week, the launch, was definitely the new X3, X4, and the uh, M versions yeah. as well. And I just found out, actually, they were designed by the same guy that did the 2 Series and also the guy that did the uh, Vision M Next. The LCI um, for the X3? You know, he actually, the yeah, the, the LCIs, yeah. He did those, he did a 2 Series Coupe and did that Vision M Next, uh, Jose. And uh, he seems like he's got a lot of projects coming out, so that's good. probably quite exciting it's, for... Uh, all of those cars you mentioned look really good. Yeah, so. they're all good. He did a great job, and especially that Vision M Next that we talked about yes, in last uh, last episode, the uh, silver and, and red one with the M1 kind of design mm -hmm. elements. I saw that in person at uh, Pebble Beach. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. And it was beautiful. Amazing, was yeah. Absolutely fantastic-looking really? car, and it's such a, such a tragedy that it's not yeah. going to be made. Maybe they uh, change their mind. Who knows? I mean, what's going to happen? I mean, it will be a shame not to have that car as an IA successor eventually. Eventually, there will be an IA successor. I just don't know when. But it, there is there is like very little doubt already. that BMW were not gonna. It, it's not gonna have a, a flagship, you know, sports car on an electric drive chain. It's impossible. Oh, they got the to. design. They already drew it up. Just yeah. Dust it off. I'm sure they can just improve up on that but um yeah so that was that but i but i really liked the 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 facelift on those and especially on the x3m and x4m i've i've already loved the x3m i actually just drove it i actually drove it when i when i went to la to drive the i4 i got an x3m competition it was the you know uh, taxi car basically just move around to los angeles but mm -hmm. um I, I even said back then i think i did a live on instagram and i said you know this is probably the best car that BMW has today, even though I say that about some other cars, but I truly believe that this is the, the one car well, that can do so it all. Good. Yeah, it is so good. I love that. Looks thing. good. It drives really nice. Uh, it's it's sporty for its size. It's not too big. Uh, a lot of power. I love the sound on it. It's practical. Honestly, I think that car can do it all. It's like a you know a Swiss Army knife, you know. And, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And the design, I mean, the the facelift, they changed that front, you know, just just enough yeah, looks great. to make it look fresh. Like usually the the facelift that I've seen lately, they're like you know just a little bit of you know change mm -hmm. on the bumper, maybe a little bit on the headlights, and that's right. about it. But they kind of went a, you did. know all in with that redesign of the air curtains and all yeah. that. I mean, the entire face is different. The entire yeah. thing, the grill, the headlights, the front apron, everything is different. Yeah. Um, and it even makes the hood look different. The hood, no, the hood's not different, but the shape yep. of the grill and the way the, the grills kind of mm -hmm. go up into the hood, it looks makes the kind of hood look more purposeful. Yep. It looks really good. And then the the tail lights have like a cool three dimensional effect. Yep. They like kind of stick out a little bit. They're really cool. You can uh, see that floating light fun. inside. You know, it's got a it's got yeah. a really nice shape. But uh, and, I also right. yeah. this, the the car was already so good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you add I do like what they did with 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 the grill. I mean, with the grill, they basically they went a little bit larger, but not crazy large, yeah, right? Yeah, no, it's perfect. And it was just perfect. enough, mm -hmm. just enough to realize that, hey, maybe, you know, a, big, a little bit of a larger grill, it's not that bad of a thing, you know, just don't go too crazy, you know. But, right, and maybe they're realizing, okay, but, sensibly um, sized grills look better than the big gigantic ones. They got to yeah, take it easy. We we give them so much... Uh, <laughs> I, I know we, we we always pick on them for that grill, I, I and do. I think I everyone do. is tired yeah. about it. But they did say in their defense that they're not going to have that large grill on all the cars, and I don't expect next five series or other cars to have that. It will be probably larger than what we see today, but I don't expect it to be on all the cars, and that's kind of what they said too. And I think when when they said that, they already know what's coming out. I mean, they're already right. Right. you know five are, five like yeah. five years ahead of us, so they're right. not gonna, just going to lie to us and say, hey, you know. They definitely know that it's not going to be on all the cars, but um, but I, it, it honestly looks great on the new cars. Yeah, it is funny though because like when you see the X3 facelift and you see okay, this has sensibly sized grills. It's mm. like, oh, like see BMW. Like when you when you do it this way, it looks fantastic. Like it looks so good. Um, but yeah, I mean I actually, there was no way that I mean they did uh, honestly when they did the seven series facelift and they went from the small grill to the large. That was a that was a shock. It was. It was, it was a little bit of an extreme. Like, it was like a totally different car. It was not even the same car. Yeah, it really. In fact, I saw a pre facelift seven series the other day, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize what it was at first. I was yeah. like, I totally forgot that it looked like that yeah. prior to the the massive grills. But um. But he, so let me let me tell a little bit of a secret. Basically, on the seven series, I just remember now. So the seven series the facelift. That was actually what the seven series was supposed to look like when it came out. So oh, really? Whenever that was, I don't know, 
looking back, what, five, six years, so that'll be 2015, right. 16, around there, basically the proposal to the board was really to to kind of go with a big grill. I don't know who decided not to, was it the design team, was so it the board, it but the initial car, that was, it was supposed to come out with a very, very large grill, and it was based on a concept car. I'm not sure if you remember, they had a series of cars that were, show at the, um, they were shown at the... Um, Villa d'Este con, uh, Concorso de Eleganza. And I think one of them was called um, uh, Future Lux yeah. Future Vision yes. Luxury or Vision yes. Future Luxury, yeah, something like that. Some something with future luxury. Yeah, because people were speculating that BMW would come up with like a nine series. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's kind of from what I heard, that's kind of what the seven series was supposed to be, kind of really close to that concept, which would have been amazing because mm -hmm. that really was a beautiful, still is yeah. a beautiful concept. Well, when it's, in a, when it's on a concept car, you know, when the grill is that big, but it's on this radical, crazy looking mm -hmm. concept car, it works. But when yeah. it's on a car that looks really normal and then it just has these two huge things yeah. slap on the front, it's very yeah. shocking, you know, so that was the, jarring. That was a little bit of a backstory That's in the fine. 7 Series, yeah. I, I remember the story because I've heard it years back from <laughs> someone that was involved with that car, so but quite I want, interesting. I, I want to backtrack to the X3M because you said you just drove it. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I think that as a car, the X3M is like 98% perfect. Yeah. Except, it's the stiffest thing I've ever. It done. is stiff. Yes. I mean, it's like bone shattering, you know, t t tooth loosening stiff. It is crazy. And, and I'll tell you why I, I know it's stiff. So aside from the fact that I can feel it <laughs> clearly, <laughs> um, I was I was on the Pacific Coast Highway and I was trying to film a 360 video. I got his Insta 360 uh, camera. Mm. And I was trying to play around with it, and I installed it on top of the roof, basically. And I was going down the hill and up the hill, basically. There, it was pretty flat road, and no it's a highway, right? I mean, it's yeah, not, it was it was smooth. Like a, it was smooth like surface. Like it was really, and and when I looked at the footage afterwards, it was bouncing. And I mean, the camera did a good <laughs> job to kind of to kind of stabilize it, but you could yeah. tell that there was a lot of bounce. And actually. Um, I could even because I was using this long stick, I could even see the reflection, you know, uh, outside. It was it was really bouncing, so <laughs> that was pretty funny actually seeing yeah. that. But you're absolutely right; it's it, it is really really stiff, even in comfort mode. I was in comfort actually most of the time. Oh, but um, see, so that takes me back to years, you know, uh, years ago. Everybody was complaining that you know BMW it's not stiff enough. It's not an ultimate driving machine anymore. No, we want it to feel like we're driving a car. We don't want to feel a boat. Now you're 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 getting a you know a sports car, you know a crossover sports car, yeah. and now you know, we're all complaining. Yeah. Hey, you know it's too stiff. We don't Admittedly, want that. They, they overcompensated a bit with that one, and I actually I think it's too stiff because they wanted to make the X3 handle like mm -hmm. an M3, and it yeah. does. Admittedly, it does. I mean, I was. I mean, before we could drive them, I remember I was in Palm Springs with BMW and they sent us, you know, around the track as yep. a passenger. I was in the front seat with, you know, one of their pro drivers in the driver's seat and I still don't know how he didn't flip over. I mean, he was pressing my face against the glass with how hard they were pulling corners and it's a tall thing, you know, it's still yep. an SUV. And like, I just couldn't believe the uh, ability of that car and then yep. you f you drive it on the, you hit one tiny bump and you realize oh that's how it does it its suspension is made out of mm -hmm. bricks like it's crazy so I think, but i i think yeah. they should slacken it off because it's it doesn't need to handle as well as like an m3 competition for instance like it doesn't it's it's an suv you know yeah. it is more practical it rides a little bit higher you know, if you want handling like an M3, you get an M3. If you yeah. need the space, you have to make that compromise. And mm -hmm. I think it needs softer suspension, not too soft, yeah. but just a little bit softer so that when you, you know, drive over a manhole cover, you know, you don't lose the fillings in your teeth. It's, it's yeah. like intense. I also think that um, they made the uh, X3, the X3, the X3M40i a little bit too sporty. So basically, they oh, they had no choice it? but to go even sportier with the X3M because <laughs> the X3, the X3M40 and X4M40 are just fantastic cars. They are. They really, they're really, they're good. really, really good SUVs. Like really good. So basically, they made those cars probably too good. Yeah. <laughs> so now you have to. 
you know, bump it up in the M versions, right. the full M versions, and that's why they probably did that. But I'm kind of curious to see how they drive, if they change anything on the on the adaptive drive and all the driving modes on the face so. and I think they I think they probably have or will or whatever because they they know they've heard the complaints about how stiff it is and yeah. um I, I think they will and in the press release it says something like it's been optimized for uh da- daily like day to day driver comfort was or something it, yeah. like that. Yeah. So I was like, oh it seems like they might have heard the complaints mm. and just slackened it. We have to little, find out. Enough. You have to that. find out. But you're right. The X3 M40 is such a complete package. It's yeah. really hard to complain about that. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember after I first drove one a few years, when it first came out, uh, I remember saying to my wife, like, once this car is used and cheap, mm-hmm. I want to get one of these because it's so good. Yeah, I drifted the X4 M40i at a press event in Spartanburg. <laughs> quite a bit actually and i did um i did also the wet skid pad so it was fun but i then i turned off all the traction controls and i went crazy with the x4 m40 uh it was super super fun i did got into uh, i did get into a little bit of trouble like towards the end but that's a different <laughs> story but uh, I, know, I know the story I was it was a little bit too much there. fun with that car but it was fantastic honestly we did so many laps at some point i think i was on the track for like an hour and i was about to leave and i'm like one more one more lap, one more lap, and I kept pushing that car. It was super, yeah. super fun to Nothing drive. Nothing good so. ever happens when you keep saying one more, one more. Exactly, one more. exactly. But a little bit too much fun with that car. But yeah, so and I also like the X Four M competition now with, with the new color, the the Sao Paulo yellow. It just looks super yeah. cool on that, you know. It. Uh, I, was, I was just listening to a podcast with, oddly enough, Johnny Lieberman and like Spike Ferris, and they were calling it highlighter yellow. Yeah. Because it's very... Uh, yeah, very it bright. is. Yeah, it's kind of the same. Uh, honestly, it's time for some bold colors. I'm no, so I'm game. Yeah, I'm game. tired like of it. boring colors. I like it. I, I feel actually, like all I the grays have been stuff. played out. All the yeah. black colors have been played out. I think it's mm-hmm. time to, you know, have some real options. Of course, you know, if you don't want to get those, you could, you could always get, the, you know, boring colors. But, right, but at least you have an option colors. now. Yeah, and I don't have to spend, you know, $5,000 now to go to individual to get a crazy color right. if I really want Actually, to. Actually, Sao Paulo yellow, I think, is free on the M3. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's it's definitely free, but I mean... It's not metallic. But so I mean, I that's that's free. the that's the point before. If you wanted to get one of those crazy colors, you had to go to individual and kind of, you know, spec right. it out that way. Well, it's not even like... Some of them are, you know, like, uh, what's the green one? Um, Isle of Man. Isle, Isle of Man, Man of green. green. Yeah, and it was some kind yeah. of like British sounding green. Um that's you know it's an op it's an optional extra it's not an individual but it's still like what is like yeah. seventeen hundred bucks or whatever for uh, yeah, yeah. for an extra color but Sao Paulo yeah. yellow is the craziest color and it's free I think that's an awesome yeah. little uh, it's a know, statement color I think oh it's a statement color and I like it on the X four I mean it on the X four M it's kind of because it's like incongruous on a crossover yeah and so it also it's fits cool the front end because you know you have this large um, air curtains with the with the mm-hmm. black like 3d shapes in there kind of like some fangs yeah and it, there's a nice contrast with that without the yellow so um i actually liked it the moment that i saw the press photo before it even went live i was like ah this one looks really good yeah no it, uh, it does look cool in south Paulo yeah. yellow um, the, the x3m was in the x3m was in portimao blue i think mm-hmm. which, which is becoming like kind of like a staple color now yeah. for bmw i think yeah. that color that color you can put on any BMW and it just looks great. I don't yeah. think I've seen a Portimao. Actually, there are two colors that I like quite quite a lot on on the BMWs lately: Portimao blue and Tanzanite blue. Yeah. I mean, those colors you can slap on any BMW and just it just <laughs> looks really good. The Tanzanite, I like the fact that it just changes hues all the time based does, on like yeah. on the light. It's super dark. You know, at it's night you could dark, yeah. you could it's even pass for black. Dark, yeah. yeah, and then during the day it's got that nice little sparkle. So it's it's a very uh, yeah. It's a very interesting color, basically. But the port, like Portimao, just kind of you know screams you know sportiness yeah. all the time. Well, shout out to uh, Joe Achilles who has his Portimao blue. Yeah, he's got uh, a Portimao blue competition, yeah. which looks really good actually. I hadn't seen one uh, in Portimao until yeah. I saw his, and he actually sent me um, a text. He sent me a message on Instagram a few mm. weeks before he revealed the car, showing his spec. I never think like, oh, that actually looks really good um, yeah. on that car. Uh, so it, it is, it's a great color. But here's another side note before I forget. 
sorry to interrupt you, but I yeah, got no, no, no. to show you. So I was thinking about colors this week. I don't know why I was into colors all this week. So uh, I, I had to send out an email to BMWMs. So I'm like, hey, guys, um, how come not all the recent colors are named after racetracks? <laughs> you know, oh, I mean, yeah, you have Portima, which that. is a racetrack. You know, I got all this, you know, Daytona Violet and all these things. And they were like, yeah, I think we ran out of racetracks, <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, I think right. They said something like, there are not enough racetracks in, in the world, unfortunately, because we would name the colors after them. So now what they said is that they focus on, like, cities that have a track nearby. So, for right. example, Toronto Red. So like right. Toronto Red right? because of Mossport, it's there, yeah, you know, Sao Paulo Yellow, the, the F1 track there and so on and so forth. But basically uh, it was an interesting one. And actually I want to write an article on it because it was kind of interesting why, you know, that they're they're not right? naming them. Because, it, I mean, historically all the M cool M callers were getting mm -hmm. racetrack names, but like, you're, you're right, they're going to run out, Yeah. Uh, you know. Um, How come there is no, is there a, a color after the Nurburgring? I don't. Not that I know right? of. Because there is Hockenheim, Hockenheim, Hockenheim silver. But I don't think there's any color after the ring, right? No, but they should have one. It's right? got to be a BMW reason why they don't have that. Maybe I should BMW, send a follow-up email. Maybe there's some like, licensing issues they can't could use. Be, yeah, that could be. But um, that would mean BMW has like, they're the, they're the Nürburgring brand. They have like, exactly. a little setup on the It's got to be a, a reason behind that. Yeah, there's got to be some legal issue out. or something. Because that would be yeah. the most iconic color probably. And right? it would have to be green, right? Because it's called the Green Hell, the Nürburgring. Exactly. So it would have to be green. So, yeah, like what the yeah. hell? No Isle of Man green. Give me Nürburgring green. That's mm -hmm. actually hard to say. Nürburgring green. <laughs> uh, but maybe that's why. That would be a... Tongue twister. Even the Green Hell color would be cool. You know, that, that would be great. That'd be a great name for a color, but I don't know if uh, lawyers would let that one fly. Yeah, that'd be a tough one. Speaking of the um, of Daytona Violet, so today one of the breaking news actually was Love that color. Uh, BMW going back into um, prototype racing. So, yes. So Le Mans, so you know, some of you might remember the LMP1. They had a fantastic prototype that they raced at Le Mans, quite successful. And now they're the finally Miami's, going right? back. The V12 LMR? Exactly, yeah. So, cool looking car, but so I'm kind of kind of excited to see what they do with this new hybrid. There were yeah. there were rumors for like a couple of years now that they're thinking about this, and you know, That's uh, idea. and um, Porsche I think is going there in 2023, mm -hmm. and also on Audi as well. I was coming back. Yeah, actually, so that'll be a quite exciting race. I think everybody's yeah. trying to find new new venues uh, to race, new championships, and especially after I was I was actually talking to someone at BMW about this. Um, recently i said what's gonna happen now after formula e exit next year because um you know the endurance racing in the u.s is kind of scaled back there were like four races this year not much doesn't seem to be a lot of excitement around that the dtm also is going through a lot of changes and they're not in dtm right now they might be going back who knows with the m4 gt3 if, they, if there is a different format or so i was kind of curious what's next for bmw right no racing at all i mean just you know so I guess that's that's the answer. So yeah, yeah, apparently yeah. you got a proof today by the board. It's it's official. Uh, I'm sure there will be a, a press release coming out. I know that Marcus Flash posted already on his um, Instagram account, the MCO. So that's pretty official. Yeah. But um, it's quite it's exciting to see what they do with that hybrid. Yeah, yeah. no, it's going to be really interesting um, because BMW has been a long time since BMW has been at Le Mans. And mm -hmm. uh, they were they were successful when they were yep. there. The V12 LMR was amazing. Fun mm -hmm. fact: I got yeah. to watch Bill Oberlin race that around um, Meet Ohio, Laguna Seca. Oh, Laguna Seca! Really awesome. Yeah, um, that thing sounds incredible. Mm -hmm. But they were really successful back then with that, and then it was 1999 their last win. So it's been yep. ages, and now they're coming back, and they got to take on Porsche and Audi. Who, I mean, Audi's been out of Le Mans for a few years, but they were probably the most successful automaker at Le Mans for like a 15 year stretch. Yeah. I mean, they were hugely successful. And so mm -hmm. is Porsche. Porsche. Porsche's been very successful. And Toyota. So BMW Toyota, is exactly. jumping back in to like a shark filled pool. Yep. In, in with, sure. with a lot of these brands that have been super successful in more recent years with similar mm -hmm. tech. So it's going to be really interesting, but it's also a great idea because there's no better way to, um, you know, get, like if the M division wants to make 
electric sports cars. There's no, what better way to figure out how to make that than to go racing. You know, that's exactly. always been the way the best performance cars have been created is really? through motorsport know-how. So, yeah, go to Le Mans, get kicked it's going to be a hybrid it's going to be a hybrid prototype mm -hmm. so kick some ass with a hybrid at Le Mans and then take that tech and bring it to your road cars and kick some more ass you know yeah I think that's the idea because the BMW always has this philosophy of transferring the the racing tech to the road I think uh, they tried to apply that from the uh, from, from from the Formula One days then it went into Formula E and so on and so forth so I think right. I'm, I'm assuming that's kind of that's kind of their thing, you know. It kind of it aligns with their core values right now in electrification and hybrids and all of that. Because we're, we're going to see a lot more hybrids coming out for sure in the next few years. Yeah, and I think it works better than Formula E as well because Formula E is too regulated. Mm -hmm. um, everything, you know, every car is basically the same. Yeah. Um, you, you know, they don't have a lot of wit, like room there for innovation, whereas. Yeah. The Le Mans prototypes are exactly that. They're prototypes. Exactly. So there's a lot more freedom in what they can do, yeah. the, the technological boundaries they can mm -hmm. push, and it'll lead to better development with EV powertrains, with battery technology. I mean, look at Lucid. Lucid is making you know 500-mile batteries, mm -hmm. uh, battery yeah. packs for its cars, and where did Lucid learn its battery tech? It was making batteries for Formula E. Yeah. So, you know, motorsport is where the best tech comes from. So I yeah. think that that was a good switch for BMW and yeah. for, you know, Porsche and Audi and all of them. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great, great, we're going to see some really cool cars in the future from this hybrid class at Le Mans. I think it's going to be really cool. And especially Le Mans. I mean, honestly, I've been to um, a lot of races, 24 hours of Nürburgring a few times. I've been to Daytona. I don't know. Le Mans is just special. I don't know if it's France or what it is, but it's France. such a special venue. It's it's different, completely different. Yeah, uh, I loved it there. I've been there twice. Loved it. It was yeah, probably one of my worst thing for me is Le Mans. Yeah, it's absolutely worth going. It's not easy getting there. It's it's a pain, but um, I'm sure. absolutely worth it. But yeah, that's a that's a bucket list thing. I always wanted to do that. That 2023. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I guess not that far out, but. Uh, mm. But I think they're going to launch it at Daytona, from what I read. So I think Daytona, um, well, yeah. January 2023. Right, because it has the D uh, designation in it. So it's going to have be uh, the car is going to be set up for Daytona rules as well. Yep. So it can race the Daytona 24-hour, and it can do all that stuff. Exactly. So, so yeah. that'll be quite, quite interesting. So that's kind of all I have for today. I don't want to keep it too long. I think we covered yeah, a lot of topics. All stuff, right? Yeah. Really the IX and the I4 that we really wanted to talk about, you know, because those are the yeah. big... Yeah, I think we, we can cover like, a lot more on that, you know, on the next episode as well. I think by that time, we're getting closer to the two series launch. It's actually not this month. I thought it's going to be this month, but it's going to be in early oh, early really? July. Is that soon? Okay. Yeah, so, but we will see the two series soon. So that's another big topic because it's one of my favorite um, cars because of its size and what it can do with the M2 and all of that. So we'll talk about that. I don't know if there is anything else coming out until then. But, um, yeah. That's kind of all I had. I think you have an M3 competition review coming out. Yep. And like it's something that people can right check now. out on our YouTube channel, also on the website. So there'll be a combination of reviews on that. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see what some other cool things we're working on. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. I keep like stopping and rewriting things for the M3 competition one because yeah. it's, it's so good. It's such a good car. That it yeah. kind of blew. I, I did not expect it to be as good, anywhere near as good as it is. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm really excited for that, that review to come out because I'm having fun writing it because it's, it was an incredible car. Yeah. Um, then I want to know what you think about the XB7 too, because when I saw the first time the XB7, the, Al the Alpina, I loved it. I thought yeah. it was such a refined and classic car. It is. It is. Um, I don't want to spoil too much because I'm going to write a review about it, but. Um, it's not as special feeling as the B7 for some reason. Yeah. I think that just has to do with the fact that it's a million pounds and there's just mm. nothing you can do to stop physics. Yeah. It is shockingly impressive though. Like what it, what it can do mm. for an SUV. Uh, Isaac Newton has to be furious with how Alpina has defied mm. physics. I mean, well, I think you drove it on the track too, right? You should drive I it uh, last, no, two years ago. Two no, years no, ago or last November, year? No, last November. Last November. I was in uh, Monticello, New York, yeah. at the Monticello Motor Club, and they had it there. And fun fact about that, we get there, and there's about 
there's like four of them set up on the track. And I was like, I, I went up to Jay and Tom and I was like, Dude, we're going to have Alpina XB sevens on the racetrack. Mm-hmm. And they said it was, um, Andreas Bovenseep and like almost demanded that they drive them on yeah, track yeah. and then sent them a bunch of extra tires because nice. he knew how capable it is and he knew yeah. that they would shred through tires. So mm-hmm. I was like, that's not only is that confidence, that is brass balls. Exactly. I mean, holy hell, that thing, I mean, it's, it's enormous. It's a massive mm-hmm. three row SUV and they're putting it on the racetrack. It's, it's cool. Yeah. But, uh, it's just doesn't, it, for some reason it doesn't have that, that magic that like the B7 has and, and I'm hoping yeah. the upcoming B8 different has. cars, different cars tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Keep saying course. the same thing, but it's usually true. You know, I I, I don't mean, yeah. like all like all the cars, but I I try to understand them. You know, even though I'm not the customer type. Right. I guess right. the only thing that we can tease, um, we're, we're probably going to end up driving the B8 Grand Coupe soon as well. I mean, <laughs> we're waiting for the first units to come to the US. Hopefully, we get a chance that. to drive that soon. Yeah. Because yeah, that's a beauty. So yeah. I keep talking about Grand Coupes, but that's uh, like the ultimate Grand Coupe yeah. right there. It's beautiful. And that, I think that's going to really make more sense than the M8 Grand Coupe because the M8 Grand Coupe feels almost like it's already a B8. It's too comfortable. Like it's not an M car. It's like an M car. I feel it's way too soft. It's it's way too like dead, like, like numb. Um, but they, when you put it in Alpina spec, you know, and that comfort is kind of expected. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to be a like yeah, be interesting perfect one. for the for the eight series Grand Coupe. I think Alpina's mm-hmm. going to be. I think it's going to be an amazing car. Yeah. That's just my expectations from driving, you know, yeah. the M8 Grand Coupe and other Alpinas. I think that's going to be a really special thing. Yeah, I think the second preview that we can share is that we're trying to get more BMW individual press cars to drive. Like I said, you know, you and I always talk about colors. You know, it's always nice to have a special color. So I think one of the yes. things that we want to do more is like really try to emphasize some of the really exotic, crazy colors that BMW has in their individual catalog. And I think some of the cars that they have, they are equipped with that from the 3 Series all the way up to A Series and M8 and all of that. So I think that's going to be a, it's going to be a cool, fun project this year to drive a little bit of those to right. um, kind of see the you know, people's reaction really to crazy colors. Yeah. And I gotta, I mean, I gotta talk to someone at BMW. Every damn car I get from them is white. It's making me crazy. Mm. BMW is uh, there's a whole story behind that. Um, it's amazing colors. They keep giving me white. It is. Uh, it's a whole story behind that, actually. And I just found out recently, also. So I can share a little bit from what I remember. But uh, basically, they have to order the cars way in advance, like really way in advance. Yeah, and right. sometimes they order the cars without even seeing them. Right. So they don't even know what the car looks like, and they have to order it. Right, yeah. So that's that's how much secrecy there is inside BMW sometimes, in between departments, all of that. So they just go by specs. And sometimes they order the car with a spec, and then they change the packages or the specs, and you end up with a totally different car. Like, you order this package with uh, you know chrome wheels, and you end up with black wheels, because they change that package right. that will come with the car. So there's a whole story behind it, which is quite interesting, you know, how... Yeah. How, how to get the best um, the best combination for a press car basically so it's not always by choice you could order them when they come out basically and you know spec it properly and they do that a lot of times afterwards too but then it takes months to get the car so they have to order them way ahead of time to get the, the first cars out yeah. that's why later in the in the life cycle of a car you see a lot more interesting color choices and interiors and all of that because now they can play around with the configurator and actually you know decide what to put in in the fleet as well yeah. So that's kind of one of the reasons why you see a lot of white. And of course, because white, black, and gray are still extremely popular colors right. among customers. And I think if I, were, cars, so. if I were a PR person, I would want to pick the you know, the colors that sell the most so customers can see it, what they really look like, not right. something else. Like the highlighter yellow is probably not the best uh, yeah, customer exactly, choice. Exactly. But However, I will say that yeah. the oxide gray on my M3 competition... Yeah fantastic color i was yeah, very happy i haven't seen it in real life yeah it in real life it looks bronze yeah it's the weirdest color it looks bronze in sunlight it looks gray yeah. in like shadows it's it's a really cool color and uh i was really impressed with that and for such a simple color you know it's an oxide yeah. gray but it really is a special looking thing so very that's cool. a cool one cool nico all right it was good talking to you yeah man yeah appreciate good. the time yes we'll the see each other next week yeah, yeah. We'll see each other next week and I'll find some other interesting topics to talk about. Yeah, we'll think of something. All right.
guys right. thanks for watching as always thanks for your support um don't forget to uh you know subscribe to us on youtube you're gonna find us on the podcast platforms we keep saying this but um it's there and yeah. if you have any questions uh nico at bmwblog.com and uh, yeah. we'll take any feedback email, or questions I'll, from you, you know, anytime you want to argue with me my email is <laughs> readily we do that quite a bit through, through <laughs> comments anyway so yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe, do all that cool, fun stuff. And uh, thanks. Good. For, thanks for all right, watching. Nico. It's good talking to you. All right, man. You too. Thanks. Take care.